Hello, it's Gal from the Girl and Her Librarian. The review for you today is on The Howling by Gary Brantner. Now this was written in the late 70s and is potentially a book to polarise quite a few people who would read it now. It is not a horror book that has kind of worn time very well. It reads very outdated. It, um, it's incredibly graphic and it can it can be a potentially difficult book however however I have memories of reading it more than once when I was a lot younger and potentially before I should have read it actually (laughs) but it's a werewolf book and I love werewolves so that's what happened it's a very short book it's only about 200 pages it's very fast paced and we've got werewolves It's one of those big city couple, um, she gets assaulted, seriously assaulted. They go out to Draco, which is a little village, to give her some space and time because the one thing a woman needs after she's been sexually assaulted is to be isolated in the middle of nowhere, Uh, especially with an unsympathetic husband. But then you have um, them going into town, things being a little bit um, creepy and you know between them things aren't very good she's been prescribed pills by her therapist and then you know just when she thinks that maybe she's settling down her dog disappears and then her husband keeps disappearing and he's having an affair with one of the ladies in town but this lady he's having an affair with oh dear this is not good it's not gonna end well And so we have the bite of the werewolf. Now, I'm not going to tell you who, where, what and why. But what I am going to tell you is this is quite a famous book. I mean, this came out before Stephen King's wolf book and before quite a lot of more modern werewolf books come out. Now, quite a few people will attribute sort of this split personality between wolf and human as something from maybe Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that sort of alter ego, alter bad side, I guess you'd call it. And so at the time this was written, there wasn't this kind of huge amount of werewolf stuff out there. And you've got the howling. And then you've got the howling too. And then you've got, you know, yes, it carries on. So this book was something that came up on everyone's list. In every horror section of a library or a bookstore, this book was there. Still, very often, Gary Brantner's The Howling is brought up against other books like Stephen King's Werewolf books, um, against Dean Koontz, um, Lumley, and even uh, Whitley Stryber's The Wolfen, which is a very, very good book, by the way. So... But this this book for me doesn't really translate through time. It's not something you can read and think, wow, this is, you know, this is very good. It's hard to relate to. It's hard to relate to the attitude in the book, especially of the the victim's husband, who doesn't particularly act very well. I mean, leaving your wife alone and going back to town to work whilst she's absolutely petrified, it's probably not a very good idea. But anyway... It's the kind of thing that you have to give. If you're reading it now, you have to give it that leeway. It's a short book. It's a quick book. It's a book you can say. It's often cited as an old horror book. I've read it kind of thing. If you want to sort of add to that list of of werewolf books and, and occult books. So I would say give it a try. I would say be prepared for some very very gory and very cringeworthy sex and violence scenes that some may find very very difficult to actually get through i mean it opens with um the sexual assault of her of our main sort of heroine in it and so you follow her through from that through her relationship with her husband through his pulling away and things happening in the village 
people going missing, kind of strange things going on, and and overall, the howling. Every night she hears it, the howling in the woods. Why would you take somebody to the woods when they're scared? Although, rather wickedly, her husband just says, nope, didn't hear it, sorry. So there, there's, there's a layer of fear, there's a layer of isolation and claustrophobia about the book. There's a layer of gore, there's a layer of too much information. Quite often, rape stroke sexual assault scenes aren't very highly detailed in books, but this one has got quite a detail and it can be very difficult to read, let's put it that way. But I read it when I was much younger and that stuck in my head as an, oh, I don't think I'd want to, to read that again. But it's definitely a stalwart of older horror and something that you may want to tick off in your having read um, column of Goodreads or your own spreadsheet or just in your head. Thank you very much for listening to my review of The Howling by Gary Brantner. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to have you like, comment and subscribe if you'd like to. I'd always love to have you with me. Thank you ever so much for listening and I'll let Mute Errant play us out. 